Hey YouTube, would you like me to show you how easy it is to make perfect polygons? Well stick around and I'll show you some tricks that the pros use. Hey YouTube, welcome back to the channel. If it's your first time here, my name is Will and I'm a 65 year old man that has been learning Fusion 360 over the past few months so I can create 3D printable files that I can sell on Amazon as a print on demand item. So welcome to my channel. Uh, today I'm going to be doing polygons. and I first started watching some of the videos and especially the one from um, Autodesk. Uh, they were pretty dry and, and it seemed pretty complicated so I watched a few other videos from other people and I came up with a couple of different uh, ways to get to where I want and I'm going to show those to you today. So here's what we're building today. It is just like a little coaster of some type uh, but it's something easy to build and very quick. It takes about 30 minutes to print and uh, you can do so much with it. After you've learned how to do the polygons, you can put logos in the middle of it and, and do a lot of other things and even put them in the side of boxes and stuff. And you can even get them up to pretty hefty pieces. This is, this is gonna be a light diffuser for one of my studio lights. And But you can get the polygons as big as you want and you can pretty much do anything as far as extruding them to as big as you want. But um, to keep the video pretty short, uh, it's going to take about 10 minutes, but you're going to learn a lot and you'll be able to do a lot with polygons. So let's get right to it. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is create a sketch. To create sketch button, and we'll come here and pick the plane that you're going to do it on. I always use the flat plane. And then the first thing we're going to do is create a circle. You can hit the C or you can hit the button here. And then we're going to pull it out. You, you, you can just set your point and then start to pull out and let go of the mouse. And then you can type in 100. And I like to grab this little line and just pull it up out of the way. So now we have a 100 millimeter circle. So what we're going to do now is create the border. So we're going to hit the O key for offset and you can see that it's wanting to go outward so that's going to be your positive number but we want to go in five millimeters so we're going to go over here and we're going to type in negative five millimeters and that gives us a border on the inside where we still keep our 100 millimeter diameter so now we got to figure out what size we want our polygons. And in my case, for this one, for this size, I'm just going to divide it by 10. So I want it to be a 10 millimeter. So I'm going to now go from there. I'm going to create a line and start in the center. And then I'm going to bring it up 5 millimeters. You can just type in the 5. And that gives me my height. And what that is is 5 millimeters on the left side and 5 on the right side. And it gives me my 10 millimeter polygon all right so now we can go up here to the create tab and drop down to polygon and we're going to use the inscribe polygon the inscribe polygon gives us a point in the center and we just drag it like a circle to where we want it and I want it to be right there at five millimeters and I'm gonna hit enter so now we have our polygon so we don't need this center line anymore. It was just for measurement at the time. So what we're going to do is just click on that line and it'll highlight blue and you hit delete. So now that line is completely gone. When you click on the lines of the polygon, you'll see each time I do it, it moves to the next one. So what it is, is if you hold shift, you can click all, all of them. Or if you just double click on the line, it'll pick all of them that are connected. So we double clicked on that. So now what I'm going to do is actually create a direction. I'm going to hit escape. Uh, so the directions that I want the polygons to flow to is going to be this direction and that direction. So we're going to create a line from the center. And as I raise up and touch that line, it puts an X right there in the middle of it. It, it already knows that no matter where you go, 
boom it does it up to about three times boom but what we're going to do is put one here and then we're going to start again create a new line and it'll put it up there for us bam so that's our two directions this way and that way so now we can hit escape and that takes us out of that so we have our polygon and now we're ready to multiply our polygons so we're going to go up to create we're going to go down to rectangular pattern this duplicates the sketch curves in rows and columns so it's going to create rows and columns of polygons by using this rectangular pattern now what I did was because I'm using it lately I went ahead and pinned it to my toolbar right up here and you can come up here and unpin it and pin it as you need it and that's pretty much for all of these so go ahead and start my rectangular pattern and you'll see that menu pops up over here and what it's asking is it wants to know the object that you want to duplicate and in which direction do you want to do that so it's already selected for the object and we're just going to double click on one of the lines which will highlight all of them and that tells it that there's six selected and then the direction that we're going to go and so we're going to go direction A and direction B so now we have those two done now we have to figure out how many polygons is it going to take to get from here to here and then we need to multiply it by two so I think it's going to take at least seven to get there so 14 polygons total for the whole span and then to go to width I'm going to go ahead and do 14 again these variables here can change in the middle of your sketch so don't worry if you don't have enough or you have too many the next thing we've got to worry about is the direction and it's showing one direction at this time and if we were to go ahead and do, pull it it would just pull out to here let me show you from that direction and we want it to be both directions so we're going to make it symmetric which means it goes from both directions on both of these now we can pull out a little bit move this over we, when we pull out you see it pulls these polygons out and what we're looking at is how big a gap do we want between them is that too big is that too small let me go in a little bit that's a that's not bad we want it to be strong you don't want it to be to be weak so I'm gonna say that's fine and looks like I may have one too many in this case two up here but just the one or oh, hell two there too so I'm gonna do uh, two of them I'm gonna take two off of this one so I'm going to 12 and then I'm gonna pull this back in and that's fine now we can go to the other direction we just grab this arrow and pull them this way to so that line looks even all the way like that a nice honeycomb shape so we have all of our polygons inside of our inner circle which is what we're looking for and you can see right here that we don't have much more room here to do it so this is about what we have to use now this is the most time-consuming thing about this whole little project is removing these um, I was hoping I'd be able to finish my sketch and then go back and just sweep through and grab all of them and delete them but it doesn't allow me to do that it does allow me but it gives me an error so the easiest way is to go over here to suppression and click that box and now you see all of these have a check and we just have to uncheck each one of these okay YouTube if you found the video so far helpful or educational or just entertaining if you would like or subscribe uh, it would really help our channel to grow all right 
So now we have all of these unchecked and we're going to have a few lines that are over, not very many, so this is pretty good. And if you have a lot of lines, it doesn't matter. We're going to delete those lines. But we, what we want to make sure is that we have all of this area here is nice and sturdy and that you're not having any big uh, solid pieces on that. So I think we're good here, so I'm going to go ahead and finish my sketch. And there we go. We have our polygons inside of our inner circle. Again, we have a few lines that are sticking out, so we'll just delete those. We'll just highlight each line, and then once we have them all, we'll just delete them all at once by hitting the delete key. I'm trying to stay ad free and if you'd like to help support me further and help me stay ad free if you would please check out our affiliate links uh, down in my description. Everything you purchase through my links even if it's not the item that you're clicking on I get a small commission from Amazon and that allows me to continue to buy filament and other things to create content and try to help my channel grow. So now we're ready to extrude. So let's go ahead and do that. So now we'll pick extrude and I'm going to pick my main body of the polygons first. You can do it in any order I would imagine, but I'm just going to bring it up two millimeters and I'm going to hit enter and that gives me my polygons. Now you know the sketch is going to disappear once you do your first exclusion. So let's go ahead to sketch over to the sketch file and turn it back on right here. So now we have our sketch back. Now we're going to extrude this body along with all the other holes that are here. When extruding you don't have to hold your shift button. Now you want to make sure that you got all of these little holes and even if you miss them you can always come back and extrude that area that you miss so it's not a big deal. So I'm going to extrude this one three millimeters. That'll give me a little lip like that and I am done. So we can get rid of the sketch there and that's what we have. So it is ready to go to the printer. And if you don't know how to do that, we're going to send it as a STL file to your downloaded folders on your computer or wherever you want it. You may want to put it on your desktop. I don't know. But what you do is you go up to the File tab and we go down to Export. And then I'm going to title this one YouTube. And I'm sending it to my downloads as an STL file. If you don't have STL there, go ahead and just click this and you'll find it at the bottom. Now you can send this in as a OBJ or you can send it in as a 3MF. It's whatever you want to do. But that whatever file you want to send it is, you can. There's a step file. You can send them anyway. So we're going to export this one as an STL. And there it is, ready to be printed. Uh, this particular size, I think, takes about 28 minutes. It sure does. And that's with this, the basic PLA. So, But really, you can put it in anything. You could have made a square. You could make a box, and then on the side of that box, sketch a square and then put the polygons on it and then once the polygons are all on it you can extrude it out uh, by hitting extrude and go negative and and taking out the polygons um, and then that, that would work perfect and you could have something like one of these that could be the size side of a box and basically that's what I had done I had um, I had this is a lid that goes on a box and I just made another sketch on that lid and then put the polygons in it and then just got rid of all that just extruded all of those out of there and got that so you can go around about it in so many different ways but just being able to stretch it 
and get them to where you want without having to make e each individual poly um, is pretty pretty fun. I like doing it that way and um, that's the way I'm going to do it until I find a better way. If you know a better way, please let me know. I watched three or four different videos and I tried each one of them and that one seemed to be the easiest and less time consuming to get to the finish point for me. But leave comments below uh, if there is a better way I'd like to know all right YouTube thank you so much for staying to the end if you made it this far um, I don't know what I'm printing next but I hope you're printing it with me thank you so much YouTube I see you